The land border between the U.S. and Mexico was closed for 19 months due to the pandemic. Coming up, we look at how the reopening will affect the city of Nogales and local businesses. Plus, the Salt River Project has been lowering water levels to provide water for millions of Arizonans. But the process has been harming local ecosystems and native wildlife. Stay tuned to find out what a local nonprofit is doing to help. And later, an annual charity football game to help first responders injured while serving. What it meant to those who took part. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Ron Tismaneski. And I'm Camila Williams. Thank you for joining us. The land border crossing between the U.S. and Mexico is now open. It's been 19 months since the U.S. closed the border to non-essential travel due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Cronkite News reporter Julia Sandor is in Nogales and explains the effects of the reopening. Today, the U.S. opened its borders to Mexico. I spoke to some people who crossed that border today here in Nogales, Arizona, to see what this reopening means to them. This Sonoran resident just crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, a journey that seemed unrealistic just a few months ago. I was here to cross already, almost two years that it was closed since it shut down. Duarte is excited to visit her sister and grocery shop. And right down the road from the point of entry, a currency exchange owner opened her business at 7 a.m. She says that in just three hours, about 200 customers visited her business. It will improve substantially, especially with the number of people coming in by car or even people leaving to Mexico. We have a lot of customers that also need pesos. On Morley Avenue, the Cinderella store is starting to see more customers. We're very, yeah, very excited, very happy to welcome back a uh, huge population that supports our, our economy here in Nogales, Arizona. That population of customers comes from Mexico. Now, businesses like Cinderella's store are ready and stocking up their products. I think that it's, it gives us a little sense of hope, which I think everyone has needed for, the, for a long time. And Nogales was affected economically since the border closed in March 2020. And most of the businesses on Morley Avenue were closed down. Starting today, Nogales business owners feel hopeful. I'm very happy. I haven't seen anyone with a bad attitude. Everyone is calling people, Mom, I crossed, I'm here, I'm walking. It's beautiful. Nogales seems to be full of shoppers and business owners are hopeful that things will get back to how they were pre-pandemic. In Nogales, Arizona, Julia Sandor, Cronkite News. Those who want to cross into the U.S. by land who are not U.S. citizens will have to show proof of COVID-19 vaccination and verbally state a reason for travel. Today, the United States has opened the border to international travelers. But as flyers land in Sky Harbor Airport, a significant power outage has caused delays, cancellations and confusion. Fallon over Stoltz McNair is at the airport where many people are currently stuck as issues are sorted out. At 8.30 this morning, computer systems went dark at Sky Harbor and two terminals. While some areas of the airport still had power, critical services like baggage claim failed and left people waiting. This morning, APS workers were conducting maintenance at Sky Harbor when an equipment failure led to loss of power in terminals three and four. An APS worker was also injured when the incident occurred. As confusion and delays began, airport officials were unclear when power would be restored. Terminal 4 was heavily impacted with travelers waiting in the terminal as flights were canceled. Many people would be there for hours longer than they had expected. They were also told the wait for their baggage could be as long as four hours. Terminal 4 is also where international travelers expected to land because the U.S. border opened today. Now several of these flights have been delayed, canceled, or left to wait on the tarmac. Southwest Airlines, um, and I know it's not just me, it's like a lot of people are kind of stranded, and that sucks. The APS worker who was injured was taken to the hospital, but is expected to recover. Now that power is back on at the airport, they have to figure out delayed flights and stuck passengers in order to get travelers back on track. At Sky Harbor, Ballon Herbistol's McNair, Cronkite News. Since receiving FDA approval for use on children ages 5 to 11, the Pfizer vaccine is now being given to thousands of children in the Valley at selected Walgreens, CVS locations and local clinics. The Assistant Director of Public Health Preparedness told KTAR there are roughly 645,000 children who can be vaccinated. 
400,000 of which reside in Maricopa County. It's estimated that 130,000 children will be vaccinated within the first few weeks of the rollout. For more information, visit the Maricopa.gov website to see locations offering the Pfizer vaccine to kids, as well as upcoming vaccination events. COVID misinformation has led to tremendous vaccine hesitancy among refugee communities. Crockett News reporter Lauren Quinlan shares how Valley Wise Health Medical Center in Phoenix has created unique ways to reach these communities and share factual information about the COVID-19 vaccine. Valley Wise Health created 11 videos in 11 different languages to increase vaccine awareness among the growing refugee communities in Arizona. Families at the Valley Wise Pediatric Clinic often have language barriers that make it difficult to understand medical information. Um, for us, it was really important to make sure that there was factual information out there that was coming from voices that the refugee patients we see trust. And so in our clinic, we have cultural health navigators. These health navigators are trusted people within the different refugee communities here who have a shared culture, a shared experience, and most importantly, they share the same language. My head, the muhim, eh. These navigators are the face of the video series, and the languages they cover include Burmese, Swahili, Arabic, Lingala, and more. Julie Guidier is featured in the Swahili segment. She helps the cultural navigators because they have so many patients to serve, and she shares a few languages with the different communities. The most rewarding uh, gratitude gesture from them is that they talk to the community. The videos teach about the COVID-19 pandemic and vaccines that are available, which Lusk believes has helped these refugees feel more confident asking questions and getting answers. There's constantly new information out there, and so figuring out how to weed out and, and find where you can find factual um, evidence-based information I think is really important for anyone. No matter the language, the information and its accuracy is key to everyone's public health. In Phoenix, Lauren Quinlan, Cronkite News. These videos reach extends beyond Arizona as members of these communities share the information they receive with family back home in their countries. To watch these videos, visit valleywisehealth.org. Water levels along the Salt River really impact the ecosystem and wildlife. After the break, how fluctuating water levels along the Salt River is causing problems for the wild horses. Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. For the first time ever, our most popular programs have been selected just for you. But there's so much more. Whether you like to travel. Wow. Feast. Mmm. And calories don't count. <laughs> look back. That is me. Discover. You know the whole story. There's something for everyone. Let's get to it right away. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. What you get from Washington Week that you will not get anywhere else are the best and the brightest reporters from different media companies, and they're able to have a real conversation about things that are happening in Washington and around the country. But it's also a show about issues that are relevant to different communities. How do you think that as the moderator, I feel this deep responsibility to bring in those other perspectives so that people understand how power and politics impact their daily lives. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Each winter, the Salt River Project Utility Company lowers the water levels along the Salt River in order to provide water and energy to more than 2 million Arizonans. But regulating the water levels has impact along the river. Megan Newsham shows us how wildlife, specifically the wild horses, handle these changes in flow. About 440 wild horses depend on this river to hydrate, to play, and above all, eat. 
You know, we're so close to the metropolis of Phoenix, right? Where you can see wildlife. There are so many recreational activities. And above all, people come here to see these beautiful, wild, free-roaming Salt River horses. Salt River Wild Horse Management Group is an Arizona-based nonprofit dedicated to managing and protecting the horses that roam this area of the state. And protecting the horses also means protecting their food supply, specifically the eelgrass. It just really breaks our heart when we see them lose this resource that they really need for their survival. However, nature is no longer in charge of the Salt River. Its levels are controlled by SRP, the Salt River Project Utility Company. Well, SRP is a power and water provider for the valley. And on the water side, we serve over 2 million customers. SRP controls the levels of the river by using a dam to release a certain amount of water. The difference between the water levels in summer and winter months is extreme, going from 800 to 1,500 cubic feet per second during summer months to sometimes less than 8 cubic feet per second in the winter. To better understand the difference in the water levels, last week the Salt River behind me was at 800 cubic square feet, which would mean that the water level was about up to my knees, and now it looks like this. And when they shut it off, it kills the eelgrass, which the horses depend on. David Stallings is a volunteer for the Wild Horse Management Group and says for the past three years they have tried to stop the Salt River Project from lowering the levels below 100 cubic feet per second. We're not asking for to keep it at 800, 900 CFS because that would be unreasonable. It would cost them a lot of money and too much effort and they have customers and stakeholders. But 100 CFS is about 10% of what they keep it in the summer. And at 100 CFS, we could keep most of that eelgrass alive. Salt River Project says this request is not as simple as it sounds. So the request to increase those um, fall releases from 8 CFS to 100 CFS um, out from Stewart Mountain Dam actually puts about 9 million gallons of water at risk every year that operation is, is continued. And Skarupa says saving this amount of water every year is crucial because of historic droughts. However, the Salt River Wild Horse Management Group believes keeping the water levels higher helps the entire ecosystem, not just the horses. Tadpoles that are salamanders and frogs and um, rare, all kinds of rare reptiles and fish here in the lower Salt River. So we could preserve that life and the eelgrass um, for all of the ecosystem. The challenge will be dividing this resource with humans and horses for years to come. In Phoenix, Megan Newsham, Cronkite News. The Wild Horse Management Group was unable to come up with a settlement between SRP. The water levels will be lowered again this winter. This means the rescue group will have to begin their feed program. To find out more information or if you would like to donate, go to saltrivermanagementgroup.org. The temperatures this week show no sign of change, with temperatures staying in the mid-80s. Evan Liss is in the Cronkite News Weather Center with more. After a warm weekend with temperatures quite a bit above average, we're going to see a beautiful week uh, this week. A storm system moving through, bumping down our temperatures. Every single workday, we're going to see highs in the low to mid 80s, which we all appreciate a lot. Later in the week, it's going to get breezy for the western parts of the state. I'll show you why. Looking at the big picture, we see a big storm system moving in off the west coast. That's what's going to bump down our temperatures. You can see here starting tomorrow, we fall under its influence. We're not going to see much in the way of precipitation for Arizona, but winds and temperatures are going to be what's affected, especially for Imperial County uh, on Thursday and Friday. You see those stronger wind barbs moving through the area with that northerly flow. After that, high pressure moves into the region, clearing out our skies even more and bumping up our temperatures just a little bit. Our highs tomorrow, you can already start to see 82 degrees are falling in Phoenix, 85 degrees in Yuma, 57 degrees in Flagstaff. So this is what we all wait for, right? All summer in Arizona is this sort of weather. 82 degrees tomorrow is our lowest day as that storm system is really centered over the Intermountain West. We start to increase temperatures gradually going later in the week as high pressure returns, 86 degrees on Saturday. For now, I've been listening to Cronkite News Weather Center. I'm Mariah Graves. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. How local first responders are taking the field to help support those in need. I was so excited when I learned that I was going to be the next moderator of Washington Week. I was incredibly lucky to be mentored by Gwen Eiffel, 
And what that gave to me was this confidence that I could be my full self and that I was deserving of whatever spaces I was in. Welcome to Washington Week. I also feel this great joy in taking the helm of Washington Week, knowing that I can mold it and make it my own, but also make sure that it is still within the legacy and the tradition that made it so great for all of these years. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. When you support Arizona PBS, you plant a seed Seeds that provide educational outreach in our community. Seeds that put our digital resources to work. Seeds that foster the trusted news coverage you expect from PBS. And seeds that continue the amazing PBS programs you love. But our garden can't keep growing without your support. Visit our website to see all the ways you can help our garden grow. Plant a seed with Arizona PBS today. Your favorite member benefit is getting better and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Welcome back, I'm Raya Graves, and here is your Cronkite Sports Report. After a jam-packed weekend of sports, we've got your football roundup. The Cardinals kick off our wrap-up in San Francisco where they took down the 49ers. Arizona was without multiple starters, including big names like Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. Instead, it was Colt McCoy and James Conner who led the way for the Bird Gang. After jumping out to a 17-0 lead, they cruised to a victory, thanks in part to Conner's three-touchdown performance. Moving forward, we might see even more of Connor after Chase Edmonds was diagnosed with a high ankle sprain, which should sideline him for multiple weeks. The Sun Devils took care of another California team this weekend as well. ASU beat USC 31-16 after Rashad White's three touchdowns and 200 yards on the ground. Much of the Devils' success this year is thanks to that run game, as well as a little bit of trickery. Cronkite News reporter Chaz Mesman tells us how the team uses their own bag of trips. Arizona State Offensive Coordinator Zach Hill has become known for his creative play calling and successful implementation of trick plays this season. Just trying to find the right, you know, fit for these games. Hey, this is gonna this is gonna work because of this, this you know, or hey, this doesn't really work this week because we're getting this, you know. And so it's just kind of finding the the strengths and the weaknesses for some of those gadget plays. In order to successfully pull off one of these plays in a game, it is a long process for Hill and the Sun Devils to work it into their game plan. You know, you get into spring ball, you know, over the summer, fall camp, you're doing a lot of research, you're, you know, you're looking for things that fit your, your style of play. And fortunately, we've got multiple guys in multiple positions that can do some, some different things. One of those versatile players that has been crucial in the execution of those types of plays this season is wide receiver Ricky Pearsall. I always love doing the trick plays and um, Coach Hill does a really good job of creating those trick plays for us and mixing it up and keeping the defense on their heels. The junior leads the Sun Devils with 378 receiving yards. He has also completed two passes for 59 yards and a touchdown. Me and Jaden joke around and we throw the ball out there and uh, I mean I got to get my arm warm too <laughs> so as well so yeah. I mean I enjoy throwing the ball. I, mean, I, I practice a little bit yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more trickery can help the Sun Devils get their season back on track. In Tempe, Chaz Messman, Cronkite News. The Wildcats snapped the longest losing streak in Pac-12 history on Saturday, ending their 20-game skid. In what looked like a winless season, the Wildcats found a way to get it done against a COVID-riddled Cal team. Arizona scored the go-ahead touchdown with less than three minutes left to play to beat California 10-3. The NASCAR Cup Series season came to an end yesterday with Kyle Larson coming in first. The win caps off a career year for Larson following a suspension last year. Larson's win at Phoenix Raceway caps off a 10-win season in which he led over 20 hundred laps, 
the most in a single season since Jeff Gordon in 1995. Martin Truex and Denny Hamlin finished the year in second and third. The Phoenix Rising saw their sunset on their season Saturday night. It was disappointing home loss that required a penalty shootout after regulation time. After winning the conference title, the Rising couldn't get it done against Rio Valley FC. The Rising were unbeaten this season at home and were looking to reach the USL Championship final for third time in four years. Head coach Rick Shantz says he and the team have to forget this tough loss and start preparing for a better season next year. This is going to be a tough one. It'll be hard to speak to them. Um, some of the guys won't be back. Some of them will. You know, uh, we, we start, I know I, I will start tomorrow thinking about next year and, and how to keep moving forward. A few weeks ago, the Arizona Law Enforcement Outreach and Support Organization hosted their 10th annual flag football game. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Blank details the event and what it does for first responders. For the past 20 years, Officer Jim Hill and his wife Cindy have worked to help injured first responders. Each year, they host a charity flag football game to help those who get hurt in the line of duty. It's a big financial hit for the, these officers when they're injured. So we wanted to help, one, remind them you're still part of the team, you're still part of our family, and two, how can we help you bridge that gap financially? For Maricopa Police Officer Sean Stoddard, a traumatic brain injury in August of 2020 has sidelined him from the job. However, being at the event reminded him of all the good that people can do. This has been a challenging time for a lot of people and for people to, um, to say, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a difference. That's a beautiful thing. The brothers and sisters that I have worked with and served with, they're reaching out and saying, we got your six, we got your back. What a beautiful thing it is to have people that want to take care of us. To cap off a special night here at Mesa Community College, the Maricopa Sentinels defeated the Pinal County Reckoning. However, the result of the game is not what matters. What matters most to the first responders is being able to support their own when they need it most. We put ourselves in a lot of very uh, dangerous situations to be able to save the public and sometimes uh, guys get hurt and it's, uh, it's an honor to be able to come out and support those guys. It means everything. The best part about being out here is definitely for like fallen officers, first responders. This is a great cause to raise money and give to those families. Hill and his wife will continue to help support those in need and hope to have the event grow for years to come. The rematch between Pinal and Maricopa County will take place in April of 2022. In Mesa, Brian Blank, Cronkite News. And that does it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Camila and Ryan. Do you have too much homegrown produce? An app can tell you where and how you can give the produce to those who need it. More on this coming up. She's the White House correspondent for the PBS NewsHour. It has been a historic and traumatic week in Washington, D.C. Former reporter for The New York Times, political analyst for NBC, and multimedia journalist at USA Today. Join me this week and every week for a critical look at this week's top news stories. Yamish Alcindor, the new moderator of Washington Week. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. It's prime time on your time. Watch Prime Afternoons every weekday on Arizona PBS. Did you miss a show in the evening? Then catch up on Prime Afternoons. Your favorite dramas. No more bloody heroics. Antiques Roadshow. Really? <laughs> Nature and Nova. It's time to reintroduce some wonder into this miracle of nature. All of the best from PBS on Prime Afternoons. Weekdays starting at 1.30, only on Arizona PBS. Successful backyard gardeners can often end up with more tomatoes than they can handle, too much spinach, and even an overload of oranges. Now there's an app for that. Cronkite News reporter Julia Sandor shows us how you can get your excess produce into the hands of people that need it. Nearly 1 million people in Arizona are experiencing hunger. One nonprofit organization, Nourish Phoenix, serves about 100 to 150 people a day at their food pantry. They have six of their own garden beds where they grow produce and send it straight to the pantry. But they are looking for more help. The last couple of years, our goal as Nourish Phoenix is to, to, to get more fresh produce into our food boxes because we know that families, it's so important. The nutritional aspect is so important of what's in that produce. And to get that produce, 
They're turning to local gardeners. Every donation, every nutritious product is important. Um, so every little bit counts, I guess is what I'm trying to say. To achieve their goals, Nourish Phoenix partnered with Fresh Food Connect, a mobile app that allows backyard and community gardeners to donate their produce to hunger relief organizations. The need is super great right now, and this is a really easy and meaningful way that people can contribute within their own community. Um, a lot of uh, groups that are distributing food like Nourish Phoenix have a hard time procuring enough produce, which is essential for health. And we wanna make sure that the folks that are experiencing food insecurity are having access to the healthiest produce. Gardeners can download the app, put in their zip code, and get all the information they need to make their donations. The mission of Fresh Food Connect is to have homegrown food within reach for everyone in the community. The impact just, it makes a difference in one person's life, like we're happy with that. If it makes a difference in one child's life, we're happy with that. In Phoenix, Julia Sandor, Cronkite News. Fresh Food Connect is partnered with organizations in more than 20 states in the country and is hoping to get the word out about their app here in Arizona. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.